Like millions of North Americans, I spent the afternoon gazing up at the sky. Thankfully, we had not been possessed by an alien mothership. Today was the day that a total solar eclipse plunged much of the United States into darkness. I'm Lawrence Brown, and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And I know what you're thinking. Ooh, Lawrence, you live in Chicago, which only got a partial eclipse. You, sir, are a fraud. Well, firstly, don't eclipse shame the Windy City. It got enough of that in 2017. And secondly, I wasn't in Chicago at the time of the event. In fact, a bit like how fate saw Doc and Marty return to 1955, the same aura had me returning to the birthplace of my YouTube channel, Indianapolis. For it came to pass that the Hoosier capital lay along the path of totality. If you were subscribed back in 2015, you'd know that Indy was my home at the time. And if you're still not subscribed to my channel, do that now! And so back to Indianapolis I went in search of a burning ring of fire. It all started the day before. You see, we decided to set off early to avoid traffic jams, having recently watched Independence Day. Believe it or not, this is actually quite normal traffic for Lakeshore Drive. The truth is, traffic is hard to predict with these sorts of things, especially since the eclipse was widely publicised in cities along the path of totality. For us mere mortals that reside nowhere near this path, it basically followed the following trajectory as follows. Beginning in the Pacific Ocean, the moon's entire shadow first hit land in Mexico. From there, it cast itself within 15 US states from Texas all the way to Maine and parts of Canada. Additionally, almost all of the United States experienced at least a partial eclipse, so let me know your stories in the comments below. Well, we just crossed the state line into Indiana, and this is the weather on the day before the eclipse. And yet the success of this video hangs largely on good visibility. So here's hoping that the stars align. I didn't intend that pun, but God, it was good. Meanwhile, 250,000 miles away in a remote part of the Milky Way, the moon was preparing for its big moment in the sun. Or, you know, in front of it. Basically, a solar eclipse occurs on Earth when light emitted from the Sun is partially or totally obscured by the Moon. At most other times, the Moon orbits the Sun at a higher or lower plane to Earth, meaning that total solar eclipses are completely and utterly a little bit rare. On the one hand, their rarity is why many consider eclipses to be so special. On the other, let's go back in time to two minutes ago when I said this. Well, firstly, don't eclipse shame the Windy City. It got enough of that in 2017. You see, while total solar eclipses are rare, many of us in the United States already went through this sh seven years ago. In fact, by a small cosmic coincidence, small pockets of Illinois, Missouri and Kentucky were lucky enough to reside along the path of totality in both instances. Indeed, Kentucky provided the location for me and my wife during the 2017 eclipse. On that hot August day in Hopkinsville, two things stood out to me. Number one, I had utterly no idea how to film an eclipse. Do you remember the 2017 eclipse video? I don't think that I knew what I was doing. In fact, I think I borrowed somebody else's stock footage of the eclipse because I wasn't very good at cameras yet. Hopefully, with seven years experience, things will be better this time. For context, my lunar photography during that period has gone from this to this. Let me know your thoughts. And the second thing I noticed is that during totality, the temperature dropped significantly. Question is, would the same thing occur this time, especially given the changes in season and location? Well, during the eclipse, we're going to answer that question with science. What question? The question that future Lawrence just asked from the studio. It'll make sense when you see the video. After five hours of soy fields, we finally made it to Indianapolis. Arthur, how do you feel about your first hotel room? Just giving us his seal of approval. Well, I don't know about the puppy, but I'm ready to catch some Z's. Z's. That night, my dreams centred not on the eclipse, but something else that I'd not thought about in seven years, my website. A decade ago, the thought of lostinthepond.com falling into disrepair would have been mortifying, since our brand was then exclusively a blog. But as the demands of becoming a full-time YouTube sensation grew more numerous, so did the broken links. Thankfully, I've partnered with Squarespace to change all of that. Over the next few weeks, we'll be revamping lostinthepond.com to make it the ultimate hub for all things 
Springs Pond. By utilising Squarespace's flexible templates, we now have a website that feels more in line with where we are in 2024. As we continue to build, we'll use Squarespace email campaigns to give you the opportunity to get Pond news straight to your inbox. In the long term, we want our website to showcase Lost in the Pond merchandise. So I'm really excited to get to grips with Squarespace's online store application. Anyway, if you need a website to showcase your work and or passions, you can try Squarespace for free for 14 days. Get your free trial at squarespace.com today and once your website is ready for liftoff, go to squarespace.com slash lost in the pond and you'll save 10% on your first website or domain purchase. The link is in my description below. Even though celestial alignment wouldn't occur until 3pm local time, we arose bright and early. In fact, I was up and about before the sun, who presumably needed beauty sleep ahead of its big day. And for folks in Indianapolis, it would be a bigger day than perhaps many of us realised. The reason for this pertains once again to the rarity of total solar eclipses. In 2017, Indianapolis only experienced a partial eclipse. And before the events of this afternoon, no human alive had ever witnessed totality from Indiana's capital. In fact, nobody in US history had, and that's because the last time this occurred, the United States wasn't even a country. If the city's previous total solar eclipse did have human witnesses, those witnesses would have been native inhabitants. You see, according to Butler University, roughly half the land comprising present-day Indianapolis has not experienced totality since 831. Since the year, the year was still in three digits. To put that into an English context, Alfred the Great hadn't been born yet, and to put it into an American American context, it occurred twice as long ago to the Pilgrims as the Mayflower voyage carrying them did to us. Well, we're en route to Butler University's campus, which is where you went to college. How does it feel to be back on your old stomping ground to witness history in the making? Well, the first thing that I encountered was some boys in CVS getting giant buckets of water because they were hungover, so it's like nothing's changed. That's it. That's really your feeling on this big historic occasion. I don't know, do I want to risk it? This is a good parking space. Butler is home to Holcomb Observatory and Planetarium, which in turn is home to the largest telescope in the Hoosier State. Sitting just outside of the planetarium, surrounded by space nerds. So this is my way of fitting in. I'm setting up two cameras. One, to take the temperature during and after the eclipse. And two, this one, which is going to point up at two huge balls in the sky. Meanwhile, the moon wandered nervously through space, riddled with stage fright amid the overwhelming realisation that there was no turning back now. The eclipse was about to start. The outside temperature before the eclipse was 76 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll check the thermometer once again after totality. As for filming the eclipse, an unwelcome discovery came to light during setup. Sly problem, I forgot to pack my solar filter. This ridiculous over for an event 1200 years in the making meant I wouldn't be able to film the partial phases of the eclipse as doing so could actually damage my camera. However, just as it is safe for humans to view a total eclipse without protection, the same is true with cameras. I had to hope that totality would at least give me some cinematic payoff. Thankfully, I had quite a bit of time to work it out. In central Indiana, the total eclipse is going to last about three and a half minutes, which is longer than the nation's longest duration during the eclipse of 2017. There we go. Get those glasses off now. Oh my freaking gosh. There it was. The Ring of Fire, an optical illusion depicting the Sun and Moon as equal in size. In reality, the Moon is just 238,000 miles from Earth, equivalent to driving between Chicago and Indianapolis 1,200 times, and while that sounds like unspeakable torture, our distance from the Sun is equal to 465,000 occurrences of the same journey. The difference in size between the two spheres is stark. You could fit 64 million moons inside the Sun. Of course, you'd destroy the entire solar system, but it's something to tell the grand kids that you'll never have because we've all been vaporized. As for me, I was largely happy with how my footage turned out. With the right lens, I might just win a Pulitzer for my coverage of America's next total solar eclipse, which will occur in 2045. Smash that subscribe button now to get notified of that video when it drops in 21 years. As totality came to an end, I turned my attention to our scientific experiment. At the start of the eclipse, I told you that the outside temperature was 76 degrees. Let's see how this changed during 
during totality. As the moon's shadow descended upon Indianapolis, the temperature began to drop. Tara and I both felt it in real time, but something even I was surprised to discover was that after totality, it had plummeted to 66 degrees, a drop of 10 degrees in one hour and 23 minutes. As the sun and the moon continue their separate journeys, let me know in the comments below if you felt a shiver during the eclipse. A special thank you to my ponderers who support Lost in the Pond with their ideas and hard-earned cash. If you would like to join them, you can do so by visiting patreon.com slash lostinthepond or by clicking the join button below. Until the next time, goodbye.